We've got three demos for you today. Um, the audit's going to hopefully work. If everything goes well, we're going to do a, a, a proper container demo. That will be basically a complete fire system. So what we're putting into the substations, the switch rooms, the control rooms, the Petronic panel, the Bestus, will all be set up there and you'll get a stage one and stage two now. And we'll deploy just one DSPA inside the plan to put the fire out inside the plant itself. I encourage you before we do the demonstration, um, cleanliness is a big thing with the DSPA stuff and we understand that aerosol is not as clean as gas because of the, you know, it's not a clean agent. Um, please have a look inside the container. The container is filthy. I, I tried to clean it today as best I could, but it's not like a nice clean substation with an air conditioning going and nice swept floors. It's, it's an active site. It's had a lot of fires in there. There's a lot of discharge from diesel and everything else that's been burnt inside the container. And um, it's not just from this morning? Oh. No, not just from this morning. There's, 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 there's quite a lot in there. Um, the one thing I will point out is the DSPA when it goes off, because it discharges with heat, it's going to create um, discharge on the ground underneath it, which is just the, the heat coming out, the paint and just everything dropping on the ground. So in your substations, whether on the roof, they'll be placed directly below it, which will discharge, but there really shouldn't be much else in the container. Once it's been vented, it should just all disappear and that's your one centralised spot where the DSBA has touched the surface and directly cooled down on it. So um, clean up is that probably by vacuum or...? Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll sweep the floors um, and like, pull the surfaces down and, and blow off lightly above. Uh, if you've got a gas flood, if a gas flood went off inside that container, all the dried and dirt that's on the walls will be stuffed inside the containers and every and, and all across your equipment anyway. So the main, main thing to remember is when a fire actually happens and when you see the, you see the flames, you actually see the smoke. The smoke's the toxic thing. The smoke's what's going to destroy the cabinet. The smoke's what's going to get inside and rust and, and damage all your equipment. It's not the DSPA that goes off to put it out. If there's a fire, the damage is already done. So the, the cleanup is there because there's been a fire, not just because the DSPA's gone off. So the cleanup process, apart from sweeping the, the aerosol that's below the DSPA and removing the DSPA, is basically identical to a gas flood system. There's no real difference. A gas flood that goes off the 15 bar will knock everything off those walls and it will go everywhere. I'm right. just going to give you a real brief understanding on how the fire system works. So this is like it's the same as what's in your control room, your switch room, your substation, uh, with the aspirator and, and, the, and the double knock system. So the biggest question I seem to get from everybody is what's stage one and stage two alarm? And of course stage one alarm is just a warning. And Kerry's going to explain that because when we do this live, because we're in such a small container and it's pre, it preheats pretty quickly, um, the, the yeah. delay between the, the Vesta system picking it up and calculating it and sampling it and then setting the alarm off is quite a, it's, it's a very long time. And we've got a fire that's already very quickly, because it's a fuel fire, very quickly heating up. So what we're going to do is we're going to preset the aspirator system off so it goes to stage one alarm and then we're going to light the fire and then we'll let the system take over. Okay, because otherwise it's, they're right beside each other on top of each other and it just it just doesn't work very well. Yeah, and we are sort of limited to how we could mount our smoke sheet isn't a proof of concept thing, so normally we would be at the ceiling point and there would be a little bit more calculations to what we've done because we've kept it pretty basic for this presentation. So yes, what we've used is a, an aspirating detection system. There's many on the market. We've, we've chosen FAST today. Um, it's similar to the um, ProTec or the, the Vista Extralis um, option. It's an aspirator with a laser on it. It's designed to pick up tiny bits of smoke, um, you know, tiny bits of uh, molecules of smoke and give you that first warning. The idea of that is, is that if you're in the building and, and you're wrapped up in your fireproof overalls or your earmuffs and everything else, you're going to get that chance to come out and investigate what's happened. Um, we were just talking before, solder, uh, soldering irons love these things because um, that's the whole point of it. It's designed to pick up capacitors and things shorting out at an early point so you guys can do something about it before you lose all your equipment. Obviously if it gets to the point where we've got to flash out a fire of some you know, liquid or whatever is happening, the smoke detectors are designed to pick that up. Um, bear in mind you can change that if you've got a high frequency that you're not doing anything. You can have this system be your activation point at both points. Um, you know, there's lots of different options and scalability and design stuff that we can do. Um, and you can actually put in a third half where you require a heat before you want to drop the DSPA. So you can do lots of fun stuff. Tronic, there's some representatives here of the, of the manufacturer. Um, they'll produce a pretty cool panel um, and it, it's pretty easy to install. Um, so yeah, the idea is, is that we use a smoke pen to activate stage one. Very similar if you've ever been in a gas flood to know what that looks like. Um, I prefer not the gas flood being inside. Uh, mm -hmm. This stuff's pretty cool. So yeah, we'll set it off and then what we'll do is we'll get the fire going and we'll let it do its course. Um, 
Pretty simple, really. That's that's our panel. Signs, evacuate, control stations, these can be remote. Um, obviously you've got a panel control system here so you can actually inhibit the, the gas or uh, the, the DSPA when you felt it was some gas, sorry. Uh, or the DSPA when you can actually come out and, and stop the stage two firing. So for example, um, we've used uh, for example the if some you two of you and, and one gets knocked out through the explosion and you need time to go in and do what you gotta do, you can actually inhibit that. But we've always built in a 30 second this today we put it on a 10 second delay. I don't think we need to go too much further than 10 seconds is a long time. But normally in situations we would design a 30 second. In big rooms you could go up to a 60 second, it depends on the risk profile of if there was a fire, what would that look like and how much damage that would do. So. Could you pair your vest up with something like that? Could you pair that with a heat instead of a smoke? You could do. So the, the sort of concept of uh, heat, like when we did our, our fire yesterday, that heat was pretty intense straight away. We've used acclimates today, which are a combination of both. Um, so you've got, you've got your heat probe in there as well and everything was in fire very isolated situation to what we would normally see but yes you can in a big open uh, room in a big um, switch room having a heat um, to fill up a room slowly the damage to your product would probably be much higher than what you would do if you went on smoke only um, but then you could look at um, for example flame detectors you could look at putting uh, Vista into your cabinetry um, actually having sampling points into your cabinetry there's lots of different um, applications we can do um, so yeah, it's, it's a relatively good question. Yeah. So we're using a smoke pen to do the first stage. So you can sort of see that's the amount of smoke that comes off a smoke pen. Um, these systems have got get like gating, they've got protocols that require it to constantly keep sampling the smoke. It doesn't just set off for the first puff, it does actually require a little bit more. We've just had stage one, the VES is now in, well, the, the fast system is now in fire. <laughs> stage one. So, so this gives you the ability to isolate from this point. Stage one doesn't mean there's a big fight. All right. So if you have a stage one yeah. alarm going off all the time, it, 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 it's not saying the building's on fire, get the hell out. It means investigate and be aware of what's going on. The system's not going to deploy into stage two. Yeah. And it will never go further than this because it needs a second detector to go off. So the idea of the two different detection, you can see it. The smoke detectors are, are separated. You could have smoke detectors be both sides, so you can do whatever you want. This application is a fire alarm system has operated. Stand by for further instructions.
victim of the SBA has got over on the product of the master system that she has now. She's making that door shut. It's got so many dirty little holes. There's no big market going on. We've got some live events.